All right, welcome everybody. We are so excited to get started on tonight's event. Thanks for hanging in there with us as we allow close to 400 people to come on board um, for this event with us tonight. We, Kyla, I've seen people from all over the country. Where where have you seen people from? I've seen people from Virginia, um, California, uh, Asheville, you know, close. And it's been very diverse in the people I've seen. Yeah, I saw some folks from Cullowee too. Um, we've got Old Fort in the house too, and Marion. So an amazing, amazing audience um, to premiere this documentary and to really highlight the beautiful community change efforts that are taking place in Old Fort. So welcome, welcome everyone. Let's get this party started. So my name is Mary Snow and I manage a small consulting firm called Equitable Community Strategies that's based out of Asheville, North Carolina. And we convene diverse partners for strategic collaboration and support grassroots community development initiatives all across Western North Carolina. So I'm just super excited and honored to be here tonight to co-host this event with this team of just good troublemakers who reflect filmmakers, artists, community organizers, next generation leaders, and musicians that are all here to celebrate Black history in Old Fort, North Carolina. So I want to start just by um, reflecting a little bit about Appalachia. So many times when we think about Appalachia, we don't recognize the racial diversity that exists in these hills and hollers. And this project really seeks to change that and tell a new narrative where there are and have always been black, brown, indigenous communities that have contributed to the rich past and even current history of this region. And so we're excited to shine a light on the diverse mountain community of Old Fort during tonight's event and bring some of their history and their current community organizing efforts to the forefront of the conversation. And here to help me do that, I'd like to introduce my fabulous co-host, which is Kyla Joyner. And Kyla is the great granddaughter of Albert Joyner Sr. So she's like royalty, y'all. Like she's a really big deal. <laughs> and we are honored to have her with us to highlight the mural, um, showcase the documentary and call for unity. She's a next generation leader in the community of Old Fort, and we're just honored to have us with have her with us. So Kyla, um, why don't you take a minute and tell us about yourself? Yeah, so as you said, I'm the great granddaughter of Albert Joyner Sr. Um, my father carried down the name. Um, I'm 14 years old, I'm a freshman. Uh, I go to Asheville Christian Academy, which some of you might be familiar with. And I'm just really excited to um, finally like share this story because I've heard this story growing up all my life about um, what my grandfather went through and how much I have to be thankful for of what he did um, because I went to the school that he helped to desegregate. And so I'm so excited that we're finally sharing this story. Um, and really tonight what we want to do is we want to reflect, celebrate, and honor Albert Joyner Sr. and really advocate for the desegregation, um, well, he advocated for the desegregation of Old Fort schools in the 1950s. And we want to also celebrate the children who courageously went out and protested when it was a very dangerous time to do so. Yeah, and we're, we're also going to premiere just a mini documentary on the mural project that was created by um, an award-winning filmmaker, John Kennedy, who's here with us tonight. Yes, and then we are also going to unveil the new t-shirt designed by Don Rymix. Um, it was manufactured by Kitspo and we're, it's gonna, it's a really cool shirt and we're gonna really celebrate it and just enjoy tonight. Yeah, and Don and his lovely, lovely wife, Cassia is in the house too. And we're so grateful to have them um, here with us and just their whole artistic brilliance that helped bring this story to life is what you see today in Old Fort. So I'm grateful that they can be with us. And let me just start with a couple housekeeping notes. Um, so our digital concierge for the evening is going to be Stephen Knight. And he's available to help address if you guys have any tech issues that come up during the program. Um, just shoot Stephen a text through the ask a question button and he'll respond and support um, any, any tech issues that you're having. And then we've also got David Lamont, who's in the background. He's our event director. He's the reason that we are all here tonight um, sharing space together. And he's behind the scenes um, helping support the Crowdcast platform. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, Kyla, I'm going to pass it to you to kick off our first panel discussion. 
Yes. So for our first panel discussion, we have invited lifelong residents of Old Fort um, to help set the context for the documentary and really share their lived experiences with the story and kind of bring it to life. Um, we're going to invite LaVita Logan, Logan on, uh, who, like I said, is a lifelong resident, and we're going to ask her some questions. All right. I know David's bringing LaVita. There she is. Hey, LaVita. Hi. I didn't know if I was supposed to come on yet. It is so wonderful to have you. I'm so excited to talk to you. It's good, good to see both of y'all today. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about the story behind the mural? Well, the mural depicts of three stories. Uh, one is uh, the pics of the, the Catawba View School, Step School, and the other one is the kids protesting on Main Street and also Mr. Joyner on the steps of the school trying to get the kids enrolled in the all-white school. And so um, this all happened in the 1950s and Mr. Joyner saw five kids walking to school and so he thought he would want to decide to walk with them and they was met with an angry mob of white protesters trying to keep the black children from enrolling in the all-white school. Uh, the parents of the kids hired Mr. George Sandlin uh, as a lawyer to try to keep their school from being demolished. And so the kids wouldn't have to be bused to Marion, uh, 15 miles away from home. Um, so the school was demolished anyway, and so they had to be bused mm -hmm. to Marion. Yeah. So why is this story important to our community? Well, the story is important to our community is because this tells a story of a brave man who, who set out to do the right thing. You know, Mr. Joyner didn't have any children of his own at the time, and, but he, he felt like it was the right thing to do when he saw the kids uh, walking to school. He wanted to be there with them. And um, so it's always good to do the right thing and it's always good to stand up for what you believe in mm -hmm. yes thank you so much You're um welcome. that was that was really inspiring and it is it is so brave of him to and those kids especially in such a time where it was so dangerous to even walk outside for a black person so that's exactly. that's very inspiring um thank you so much we will come back to you in just a minute okay Next up, we're going to be talking to Teddy Plummer, um, who is also a lifelong resident. So in just a second. Hi, Teddy. everyone. How are, How are you doing? doing? I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing wonderful. Yes, uh, I grew up in Old Fort in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. And I can tell you that Old Fort followed the Jim Crow laws that were set up by the nation where black people could not go into the front of the businesses if they had a, a back door. But Old Fort did have some racial issues, but it was not as bad as other parts of the country. It was an undercurrent that you could feel in the community. You could feel it, but um, we made uh, relationships with each other, so it really wasn't that bad. We did not have a lot of the racial issues that um, other towns, other cities had. So we we knew we had to get out of town before sundown, but and then we couldn't go through the front door. If we wanted ice cream, we had to go through the back door. We couldn't eat it in the uh, ice cream shop. We couldn't sit down at the at the lunch counters or anything like that. And Old Fort was redlined where the black communities were left out of the town of Old Fort. They couldn't vote. They couldn't do any elections inside the town of Old Fort until later years. So um, speaking about like relationships, how do you think this project itself helped build new relationships? Um, it brought a lot of people from different walks of life together and we had one purpose in mind and that was to come together to make a statement and make a change in Old Fort and make Old Fort um, 
less racially diverse. We're still working on it. Change is not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen one day, one week, one year. It's a struggle that is going to take a lifetime and maybe many lifetimes. But each generation must do their part. We're just at the beginning stages of, of change right now. But it's up to each generation to step up, step out, and make, make the change happen. Um, what do you think, I know you kind of touched on it a little bit, what do you think this this history uh, means to you as a lifelong person? Uh, it means to me that our narrative is now finally being told. For a long time, a lot of people didn't realize that there were black people in 04. We were considered the invisible population. So now, they know that black people existed in the town of Old Fort for many, many generations. Yes, that is, that is crazy to me. That, um, of course, because I'm I'm younger, I never grew up knowing about like well, I knew about it, but I never experienced it. And it's crazy to think that um, a couple years ago, people wouldn't have even know my people existed and our people. And yeah, this crazy to me. Um, Levita, we're going to hop back to you. What do you hope people learn from this history? Um, the O4, I want them to learn that O4 has a rich history, not only in the indigenous population, but as the black population as well, uh, that we um, have our own little civil rights uh, hero here at O4. And I want them to learn that that you know the black people we make up 30 percent of the population here in 04 and like my beautiful cousin had once stated that our bloods are in the soil here you know we have we we are the ones that helped build 04. so i just want them to, to know that you know it's 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 always it's always good to do the right thing and it's always good to step up and step out and and that's what you know people on the move is trying to do I want people on the move? I want the, the black people of 04 to come forward and, and take their rightful place in in this town and make you know for they be on the at the table of decisions, you know, making decisions. So that's what I want them to take back from that. Yes, that's so well said. Um, Teddy, we're gonna go back to you real fast. Uh, how do you think this yeah. resonates today and speaks to the work ahead of us in pursuit of racial equity in 2021? Uh, just like I stated before, change needs to happen. We need to make uh, Old Fort, McDowell County, and more diverse communities, more diversified. We need to have more Black entrepreneurs, more Black owners, and we need to just make our presence known. And we need to tell our narrative to anyone that will listen. We have a like Levita said, we have a rich history in Old Fort in the McDowell County. And so we just need to make it known that we are here and we're staying. We're not going anywhere. Yeah. So <laughs> well. Um yeah. Um it is crazy. And people might not realize, uh, well, older people might, but as like my younger generation. I've had kids and fellow classmates not even know, like, this segregation and all of this was not that long ago. We have people, my great grandmother on my white side, and my, well, not even my great, my grandmother on my white side, and my grandmother on my black side both grew up in segregation. And just hearing the different stories and the different sides has really helped me to get a perspective on this. And it's, it's, it's very, it's very wild to me. And I'm very glad that we have to have that we have this and we're talking about it. And like you said, change is not gonna come overnight. I'm not gonna wake up and everything's gonna be perfect. But if small communities like us start doing just small things or like the mural and just start doing things in our community, it'll make an impact on the rest of the nation, I hope. And together we can make change. That's the only way it's together. That reminds me of a quote um, that I just love, and it's 
many small people from many small places do many small things that change the world. And I feel like that's what we're doing through our community forum efforts and through this conversation and having just an intergenerational dialogue um, about the civil rights movement in local rural communities and the history of that in the 50s to today, you know, and what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. yes. um, thank you ladies so much for sharing the stories. We're gonna um, go to our next panel, but we really appreciate your insight. So so next we're going, I'm going to introduce to everyone, John Kennedy. Uh, he is a renowned and award-winning uh, award filmmaker and documentarian. Uh, he has produced, directed um, documentaries for PBS, Frontline, The New York Times, The Washington Post, USA Today, The Gates Foundation, The UN Millennium Campaign, The Global Fund, Southern Poverty Center, and Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Um, here he is now and launched Musicians for Overdose Prevention. So very, very impressive. Um, John, can you tell us a little bit about your experience as a filmmaker and what was your personal response to this project? I was so excited to be invited into this project. I, you know, you spend 2020 watching all the upheaval, Black Lives Matter, and you want to be someone who can, you know, help support, be a support person, help amplify voices. And I was looking around and Jen and David Bilstrom introduced me to this project. And I met these wonderful people like LaVita and Mary and, and Paula Avery and learned the story of this small rural town in North Carolina who was leaders in fighting against desegregation. And I was like, this is perfect. I love it. I just feel so grateful to be part of this project. Yes, that is, um very inspiring. So everyone, if you want to go watch his film, which is wonderful, uh, we want you to see this at the highest quality possible. It is so good. Um, there's going to be a link in the chat and you can go watch it on YouTube. And then we want you to come back when you're done watching it because we're gonna talk about t-shirts. We're gonna interview some more people about this project and we're gonna get a song from David Lamont. Um, written about the mural. So if you like, you can leave this window and go watch this eight minute film, then just hop right back. Can I add one thing? Yes, of course. I, I, my collaborator in a number of, a couple of projects, video projects is David Syke from Fiasco Pictures. And so I don't want people to look at the documentary and, and think this was all me. This is, he's a fabulous camera guy and editor. So I want to give some thanks to David and Fiasco Pictures too. Yes. Okay, everyone, if you want to go click that link, uh, we will be right back. This is a big story. This is a story about America. Yeah. Yeah, I was just sitting here this morning thinking about it. I wish he could come back and look at that. <laughs> because we want to honor Mr. Joyner and his bravery. Yeah, he would enjoy it. This, this is amazing, I think. You know, making sure the voices of the people of color and no Ford have been represented. Beautiful. It's capturing a moment in history. I mean, it's 1955 this happens and then it's led by children it's an incredible story 1955 is Brown on the verse of the Board of Education to desegregate the schools Mr. Joyner put on his best suit and escorted the kids to try to get them enrolled in the Old Fort school he was met with an angry mob he got punched and got threw it in the fountain down here at the Arrowhead Fountain My name is Don Raimex. I'm from Puerto Rico. Um, I'm in Old Fort, North Carolina, working in a mural honoring Albert Joyner. I grew up in a humble community in Puerto Rico. Um, I always like to do projects like this, you know, like a history of the, of the people who live, you know, in one specific place.
Well, we have the STEM school, and then we have the kids protesting to keep their school open, and then we have Mr. Joyner uh, on the steps with the superintendent, and so his request got denied, and so the kids had to be bused to the all-black school in Marion. This is me right here, right there, but I'm, I'm on there with them little boots on my feet, right there. <laughs> my name is um, Ruth Gardner, but I have a nickname, and they call me um, Pepper, and that's, that's what I go by. I can remember Mr. Jonah taking a bunch of bus from where I, we went to church and walked us all the way down here in the town of Oak. And that school, the white school was over there. And it started being mean or something. Burning crosses, wake up in the morning, there would be a cross burn. Why, I don't know why they burn a cross. Yeah, if you notice that the little boy is, not, is looking down because, you know, back then they, can't, they couldn't look a white man in the eye. Mr. Joyner's not even looking at him as any, either. We were still under the white only and colored only situations at that point in time. So we knew, you grew up knowing the rules. Your parents taught you that you can't go to the bathroom that says white only. You have to go to the one that says colored only. There are certain fountains that we, you could not drink out of. The fountain up there in the middle of town, we couldn't drink out of it. We weren't allowed to. If, they, if the shop owners had a back door, you weren't allowed to go through the front door. You know, we grew up being chased. You couldn't even walk to town because you were scared. My name is uh, Janet Lytle Green. I've lived in Old Fort basically all my life, and that's uh, 67 years. I hope it does help the generation, my granddaughter and, and stuff, because, you know, they think it's just on television you see this stuff, but we grew up in it. My grandmother was a slave. I'm called Aunt Greeky. That's because my name is a Greek name. And I've lived here in Oak Fort all my life. I think of, of uh, Brother Jonah because what he believes, he stood up for. And it learned us a lot to not accept everything. You know, you have to question some things. People like Joyner, you know, they teach us lessons, you know, like, you know, after he did all this, he got beat up. That's a lesson, you know, about compassion, you know. This happened in 1955. And so it took 10 years, 1965, until they desegregated the schools. You know, you have to remember the past to, to move on. A lot of people don't understand what people of color went through in the country, in the USA. And if we don't remind them of these stories, they kind of never understand why Black Lives Matter today. Walbert Joyner is actually my great-grandfather. And I wanted to know more about his story. When he saw the kids out there and just decided to go walk with them, even though there was no adult or anything, they just he just decided to do the right thing. Well, you know what I was thinking the other day? And if you look up when it rains, that rainbow comes across and it's all different color. You don't see black and you don't see white. And if we just not color out of the way and let, let our heart speak through our mouth, you know, this would be a whole lot better place.
down like it was never there. And 54 Brown versus Board told us that separate isn't fair. In 55, five kids went down to town to register for class, thinking maybe they could study in their own hometown and laugh. But they couldn't come to school there. They were turned away again. And it took another decade for those kids to finally win. Sometimes it will be danger, sometimes it will be cost. But if we don't look out for children, well then everything is lost. Cause the kids aren't just tomorrow, they are leading us today. If we can't find a way forward, let the children show the way. So what did you think of the documentary, Kyla? I thought it was really inspiring. Um, my little sister made a cameo in there. Um, uh, I just, to see so many familiar faces and really to see so many familiar happy faces. Um, that at that, when we all went to the um, showcasing of the mural, it was all positive. And just to see that positivity um, from a different angle um, and just to see it again, it really made me happy and it inspired me for the future of racial equality in Old Fort and all around the world, really. Yeah, it, that day was the highlight of 2020 for me, for sure. Just to be, it's like being on sacred ground, you know, and the dancing and singing and just pure joy um, that we were sharing, you know, with each other and building community at the same time. I mean, it was just, it was just a, a lovely day. It was yeah, lovely. and especially so much positivity in especially a dark time. Thankfully, it was the ending, you know, of a year that many consider not so great for them. But if we were able to take a little bit of our time and kind of shut out everything that was going on in the world just for a little bit and just celebrate what we had done there and today, and I think that's really powerful. Yeah. And the fact that the school kids protest happened right there, you know, right yeah. on the corner. And we were reclaiming that space. You know, the community was visible in downtown. And, you know, like Teddy said on the panel, you know, we're here and we're not going anywhere. And we make this town amazing. And it was just different generations um, really building pride for Old Fort and the history and the community. So such an honor. Um, so appreciate John you know, bringing that to life and making it more beautiful than we could have ever imagined. So let's, um, let's welcome everybody back. I hope you guys enjoyed the film too. We're going to transition now to our second panel and invite three just amazing movers and shakers who made this mural happen. And what I love about each one of these women is that they do not take no for an answer. <laughs> and if you have an idea, or you have a vision for how to make your community better, they're gonna stand behind you 100% to make that happen. And that's exactly what they did for this project. So I wanna start with um, Kim Effler. If we could bring Kim on the stage. She is the executive director of the McDowell Chamber of Commerce, and she owns the building that the mural is depicted on. So Kim, come on down. Oh, we got Jen. Hey, Jen. Jen's also fabulous. And we can start with Jen, too. That works just as well. So Jen is actually the system czar at Kitspo. <laughs> and Jen has done an amazing job bringing different partnerships together, different connections that has made this mural just above and beyond anything we could imagine. So just a beautiful job. So welcome, Jen. We're glad you're here, too. And I'm glad to be here. Kim, I see you. Hey, everybody. I do want to start with you, if that's okay, just so that you can share a little bit about how you stumbled upon this story and um, brought it to the attention of community leaders in Old Fort. Yeah, I would love to share my story. So I think 
I could speak for our entire family when I say that when we purchased this building in August of 2018, we never dreamed that we would be sitting here in this moment with 423 people mm -hmm. shared with us. My heart is so full. Um, Jerome and I purchased the building because we love old things and we thought we could save it. Um, it needed a lot of love and TLC. And I was curious to know when it was built. Um, that led me on a journey to find George Sandlin. I learned that um, the, the building was built as a 1924 segregated silent movie theater called Everybody's Theater in Old Fort. But the stories that I read about George and his family and the theater were all happy, happy, happy times, happy memories in the theater. Um, I did some crazy uh, Facebook stalking to try and find mm -hmm. his family, and it worked. I actually found the great grandson of George Sandlin who connected me with George's daughter, uh, Caroline. She's still living at 102 years old. And Jerome and I had the pleasure of meeting her in person. She shared beautiful stories and memories about the theater and about her parents sitting um, upstairs with their friends, upstairs meaning the, the black um, seating area for the theater. Um, when we were with Caroline, we learned about George and his pursuit of education in his late 60s. George became an attorney because he believed in justice and he believed in his, in his community. And through that, um, that gift, he was able to represent the Joiner and the Black community in Old Fort. It was when I Googled George Sandlin and attorney, I found a book called Greater Than Equal, um, a book about African-American struggles for schools and citizenship in North Carolina. And this did it. This was the connection that connected my, my building to George, to Albert Joyner. And at that point, I realized there were two men, one black, one white, both being very brave and, and standing up for what was right in a sleepy little mountain town. And I knew that this was a story that needed to be shared. Um, in August of 19, we shared the story and my research with the Old Fort Community Forum. And a year later, we were we were watching paint go onto the uh, the facade of the building. So it's been a journey. I think for us, it has satisfied um, such a desire to share the story with the world and to give back to these two men. Thanks, Kim. I remember you being at the Old Fort Community Forum and you bringing that book too and pictures and being like, look what I found. This story is something that we have to tell. Like, how can we tell this story? And less than a year later, here we are. Here we are. Amazing. Yeah. Well, I want to bring on um, Paula Swepson next. If Paula can join us, she is the executive director of the West Marion Community Forum. And West Marion Community Forum is the programmatic manager of People on the Move for Old Fort. So Paula. Hello. There you are. Hey, Paula. Welcome. I'm here. Hey. Hey. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and um, West Marion Community Forum's role in this project? OK. Can you hear me? can hear you. Okay. So West Marion Community Forum, we're a convener of people, just like tonight. This is what we do. We bring people together and we uh, share goals, their goals, their visions, and we just like to, I hope no children's on here, we like to make shit happen. And this is what happens whenever <laughs> we get together. Uh, so this project, uh, as Kim stated previously, came out of the Old Folk Community Forum. And uh, at the time, uh, there was a disconnect with the Black community, and Levita, who had been with uh, the forums in the beginning, uh, started out and said, well, we 
sat down with her and was like, well, let's just bring some of your community together and see their thoughts and uh, really what's going on and what they think. And so this is actually what come out of uh, people on the move once we got together, Kim's wonderful idea with the book and everything, and we all work together. And so what we have found about uh, what it's all about, it's not a competition, it's about collaboration. So we all, we come from all walks of life, a very diverse group of people. And we just come together, we have fun. And most recently, uh, just think about how you can do this for your community. Uh, if you look at Mary's background, and then I'll show you this, the book uh, we recently published uh, back in um, December, uh, it's called Shift Happens, Shift Happens in Community, a toolkit to build power and ignite change. And so as you see, this this ignite, this ignite ignition right here is fire for sure. You know, what we have seen with uh, this mural, uh, not in my lifetime have I seen anything this wonderful. So Thanks, Paula. Yeah, will you share with us just a moment or a story that stands out to you from um, the process of installing the mural? Yes, I say on the, the first uh, day when Don and Casilla and their wonderful children came to town, uh, we all met at Hillman's Beer and had dinner. And it was it was just a hit just from the beginning. Everybody, I say, was on one accord. And when we got down to the actual site to see the process as uh, Don and Casilla sit there side by side talking, uh, getting the screen projected correctly so he could start the outline and just the mood of the people. It was just wonderful. And I, I, I don't think I've ever felt so much peace in, with all the work that we have done mm. in the past uh, five years. Yeah, I remember that moment too. It was, it was just incredible. It was evening, it was dark. And to see the mural projected on the wall, I mean, it just, no words, <laughs> you know, to see that happen. It was beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, Paula. All right, so Jen, I'm gonna go to you next. Um, I would love to hear a little bit about your role in this project and how you weave together so many great partnerships to take this effort to such great heights? Well, I'm really honored to be included with this group. Um, it's definitely one of the highlights of my life, but meeting people and connecting with them is really my jam. And if I can do that and build in a small town and help build community, I really love that. So generally I'm a good listener. I'm a curious person. Uh, so I, when I meet someone, I just start asking questions. And that's how I really came to know John Kennedy, our filmmaker. Um, we met at boot camp. We were doing push-ups together at Lake Tomahawk. And over time, I got to know him a little better. I found out that he was in New York City on 9-11. He's one of those people who walked home in the ash. And that event changed the trajectory of his life. And that's why his family landed in Western North Carolina. Um, I saw him at work at the Gerrymander 5K. That was an event that shone a national light on the gerrymandered line in Western North Carolina. And I learned that John really he found a way to help people feel really safe when they're telling their story, especially if the person hasn't, you know, been asked to speak up in the past. So when Levita and the gang started talking about maybe we should capture some video of people who ex experienced desegregation in Old Fort, I thought of John. I had no idea that John would bring um, a, an award winner, David Satch, the camera person to the party, but he did, and the rest is history. So I also got a bunch of my friends, my coworkers from Kitsmo involved. They really helped with social media posts um, during the fundraising effort. They helped sort some equi equipment rental issues. They even designed a bike route that passes the mural. Um, when Levita decided she wanted music, I thought, okay, yeah, that's great. So while Don's working, we'll have some background mu music. And uh, no, that's not what Levita wanted. Levita wanted a dance party. 
every night. And so Joe Adams from Kitspo, he made that happen. He was playing the tunes while Don was laying down the paint. And it, it's probably the most action downtown Old Fort has seen, maybe ever. <laughs> so we had a great time. Um, so, you know, in general, making the right connections really fueled this project. And so while I've got everyone kind of, you know, in the audience, I, I want to challenge you all to help us find that next John Kennedy. We need some connections because we got some more work to do. Um, like Paula said, we we get shut down and we're not done. So <laughs> I'm just going to share quickly three things coming up for us. Number one, we need creative and innovative town leadership. We don't have a town manager and we really, really need one. And we need someone who's ready to work hard and be supported by a community that's hungry for change and for improvements. So if you know that person, send them our way. We also need funding for their salary. So speak up if you know of organizations who can help. So um, this is not a secret in our town, but many of you will not be aware that many of our citizens don't have basic sanitation. And those that do report that there's massive leaks into our waterways, into the Catawba River. People are even seeing backups in their, in their bathtubs. So we need to be connected to the right organizations who can help us provide basic sanitation and help us restore the waterways. You won't be surprised that many of our black neighbors are suffering more than others. And finally, really fun project. We want to increase outdoor recreation for all. This community wants trails that are accessible to more people and closer to home, and they want a splash pad. Think about it. What gets kids moving better than a splash pad? And knowing how to swim isn't a barrier. So we're never, nearly shovel ready with 40 miles of trails through a collaboration of the G5 Collective and US Forest Service. And we're undergoing a planning process for the splash pad, but both projects need funding. So I'm just putting the word out there to you, you know, in memory and honor of the way Albert Joyner spoke up, People on the Move Old Fort is still speaking up today. We ask you to listen and we encourage you to connect us to the right people. Keep our momentum going. Amazing, that's right. So we're just getting started in Old Fort. Um, and you know, in general, we are looking to build an equitable community and we wanna make sure people have access to everything they need to be healthy and thrive. And we would love to have everybody's support in this effort. It's community driven, it's bottom up, it's local residents um, leading the charge. So um, we hope you guys will join this movement with us. Well, I wanna thank all of you ladies so much for your courage, for your passion, um, for your advocacy, and for being with us tonight. Y'all are all incredible and just honored to be able to work with you. So thanks for being here. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye. So I want to check back in with Kyla, my co-host. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right. So Kyla, I heard about these really cool t-shirts that our mural artist Don Rymix designed and Kitspo produced to honor the mural. Have you seen these? I actually have one right here. If you want to just take yes, it. Let me grab it. Oh, wow. That's so cool. So this is the back of the shirt, the front of the shirt. Ooh. These shirts, um, let's talk about these shirts. Yeah, tell me more, tell me so, more. So actually, so um, this is designed by, of course, Don Rymix. Um, he um, made these, this is his design. Uh, it is 100% organic cotton. Uh, they use a special dyeing process that is environmentally friendly, and um, it is made in North Carolina, so it's local, supporting our local businesses. Um, now, someone, we are going to pick one of our Crowdcast and one of our Facebook viewers, both to win a t-shirt. So we are going to have Steve, uh, uh, someone who's going to help us, and one of you are going to win a t-shirt with someone from Facebook and someone on Crowdcast.
Can anyone do a drum roll? Drum roll, please. And we'll wait for Stephen and David to announce the winners. I can't do a drum roll. <laughs> um, I don't think I can either, but we can get some drum rolls in the chat, possibly. So why are we, so, mm -hmm. Charlie Albums, uh, from Charlie Albumen is our winner for the shirts. So we will get those to you. We will follow up with you via email. So Charlie Abelman, we will find a way to contact you and you get your free shirt that is, again, organic cotton. Um, this is the back. Uh, it's, it was made in North Carolina and it has the kids bow sign on the sleeves. So, and congratulations, Charlie. Yes, and if you didn't win, do not worry. Um, you can click a button and get yourself on Crowdcast in the link and get yourself a t-shirt. Um, all of the proceeds are going to go to help uh, people on the move for Old Fort. So thank you so much for Kitsbo for um, helping us with the cost of these shirts. Um, while we're at it, we are also launching a website, uh, oldforttogether.org, where the documentary and the t-shirts and the history behind the, book, uh, the mural will continue to be on the website for anyone who is not exactly knowing about it but right now, but like all these stories we've heard, they just somehow stumble across it and learn it. So that's, that's all we want is for more people to hear the story. Um, next up, we're introducing Manya. Uh, she is a product designer at Kitsbo, and she's going to share the production behind these t-shirts. Well, while we're waiting on Manya, actually, I think we, we got another t-shirt winner. We yeah, do? We saw that, yeah. Leslie on Facebook? Leslie? Leslie Howd. 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 You, we are going, you also won. That is our Facebook winner. So congratulations, Leslie. And also we would love to shout out uh, Dan Allison, who has, who sadly can't be on here right now, but he has done so much to help out. And we just want to give him a shout out and say that we, we love having you in the chat. If that's all still, we are so excited and thank you so much. Yeah, Dan's been a great partner um, for this whole project and he's been, is a lifelong resident of Old Fort and was actually at the high school um, when it was being integrated and um, just appreciate all he's done to support this effort. Manya, hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Awesome, thank you for having me. Kyla, you said so many nice things about the t-shirt uh, <laughs> that leaves me with <laughs> the background story. Um, so I met uh, Don Rymix in September, and um, we were talking about doing a collaboration t-shirt in celebration of the mural, and um, it's sort of, it was super exciting, but also like uh, a little bit challenging. Um, there were three, three main kind of goals and challenges um, that informed the process of designing. Um, the first was scale. I mean, you look at the mural, and it takes an entire wall to tell that story, and then you look at a t-shirt and you have about 10 inches. Um, so that was the first, the first hurdle. And so really just looking at like, how do we distill the social intent and the story, this incredible massive story, um, and put it onto a shirt, not just shrink it down, but how do we find something, some part of that um, and express it on a shirt in 10 inches. Um, the second aspect uh, that was challenging was, um, really inspiring an action, inspiring a conversation. Um, so trying to pique interest in Old Fort and in the mural itself. Um, so not just putting it all on the shirt, um, but really just kind of starting the conversation and uh, getting that, that kind of interest and um, finding a place to kind of enter into it. Um, so when you tell the whole story, well, then you told the whole story. It's kind of boring. So sort of piquing that curiosity is the second challenge. Um, and the third challenge was uh, expressing the artistic style and colors um, used in the mural, uh, which of course, Don Rymix was 
he's super adept at that. So that was really just more like a pleasure than a challenge. Um, but so that ended up with uh, just looking at the mural and then the word together kind of stood out as being the sort of linchpin of the story. Um, one of the underlying motives for the and inspirations for the mural was to focus on continuing that discussion and the exploration of together. Um, so, um, after, so we have the word and we got it all together. Sorry, there are many sketches back and forth, um, but we we're really just looking. Once we found together, we were like, we're there, we've made it. Um, the back of the shirt brings it back to Old Fort with the town's name along with Don Rymick's signature. Um, and so after we collaborated, Kidsville, of course, as you mentioned, is underwriting the cost of production and the shirts, um, Don's fee, which he substantially reduced for the project. And all of the profits of the shirts will go to People on the Move for Old Fort, a nonprofit organization um, that makes Old Fort a better place. Um, on a more personal note, uh, in 2018, when Kim and Jerome were moving to Old Fort and renovating their building. I was about a couple hundred yards away with my partner, also renovating an old building in Old Fort. <laughs> um, so this sort of feeling of making space and sharing space in Old Fort is just, it's very personal. It's a very lived experience for me. Um, so I hope that the shirt can kind of go out as, as an invitation um, to people all over the place to come together in Old Fort and share this town with us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, again, if you want to get this awesome t-shirt, it is um, on in the links in the chat. And there was one question about what the squiggle is on the back. Um, that is, if I'm not wrong, uh, Don Rymix's signature. So you are correct, yes. What that is, and it's, I love this shirt so much. Again, here we go, together. So next up, thank you, Manya, so much for giving thank us. Thank you. Um, next up, we're gonna, I'm going to introduce David Lamont. Um, he uh, has had a major role in this project. He's like a little worker bee. Um, He's been helping us dream big by designing this event, launching our websites, and he even wrote a song about the mural. Uh, he, and this is important because he's an internationally known concert artist who has performed in over 3,000 concerts across five continents. Uh, we are so honored to have his support and partnership. So thank you so much, Dan. Or David, I'm sorry, David. That's all right, we can thank Dan too because he's yeah. also awesome. And we had some tech issues. Dan was gonna be a part of this event tonight. Um, we're glad he's tuning in, at least with his fingertips. Um, and speaking of fingertips, I hope mine worked for this song. I'm going to go ahead and just admit in this moment that um, I've been doing a lot of the back end tech on this event tonight as well. <laughs> so anything that's been awesome about this event, it's because of all these awesome community organizers you've seen. Anything that's been a little sketchy, that was pretty much this guy. <laughs> but I'm really glad you all hung in there. and. Um, and I think the energy has shown right through. Um, what a pleasure to be with y'all. I'm moved by this story and I'm moved by this community. I'll let y'all get off screen for a minute. You won't have to sit there awkwardly while I'm singing. I'll get you right back in just a second. Thanks, Kyla and Mary. And, and wow, my, Kyla and Mary, beautiful work uh, on this event tonight. What a, what a treat to have this time with y'all. Um, Mary, I've gotten to know a little bit over the course of the last year or so on this project. And um, she's done some work with my wife as well. And so we have some connection there. Kyla, I'm just beginning to get to know, and goodness gracious, I want you all to make sure, I wanna make sure you caught that when she introduced herself, she said 14, freshman in high school. That's what she said. This extraordinarily competent, um, charming young woman who can hold a space like this with 300 people watching. Um, wow, pretty cool. So I'll sing you this song here. Uh, I don't know who wrote this song. Oh yeah, it was me. Uh, and that's that means I've got nobody to blame but me that it has a lot of words. But it's a lot of story to fit in one song. So it had to have a couple verses to get the story through. Let's 
Let's see how much of it I got in here. In the 40s in the mountains, mostly white folks ran the show. When black families said they need a school, the school board just said no. So they made a way from no way, because that's what you learn to do. They each put in some money, and they gathered up their tools. And they built the top of you, as fine as any school around. To educate their children in this little southern town. Sometimes it will be danger, sometimes it will be cost. But if we don't look out for children, well then everything is lost. Cause the kids aren't just tomorrow, they are leading us today. If we can't find the way forward, let the children show the way. Then in 1950, the school board came around. Though they weren't the ones that built it, local power shut it down. And they told the kids they had to ride the bus to school each day. And that school was out in Marion, over 15 miles away. So the kids got painted brushes, made some signs, and made some noise. They marched right down the main street, those courageous girls and boys. The parents hired a lawyer, Mr. Sandlin made a fuss. But the case dragged on for two years while the kids still rode the bus. Sometimes it will be danger, sometimes it will be cost. But if we don't look out for children, well then everything is lost. Cause the kids aren't just tomorrow, they are leading us today. If we can't find a way forward, let the children show the way. They tore the schoolhouse down like it was never there. Fifty-four ground versus board told us that separate isn't fair. Fifty-five, five kids went down to school to register for class, thinking maybe they could study in their own hometown at last. Albert Joyner woke up, read the news, and had a bite to eat. Then he heard some people shouting, so he looked out toward the street. Mr. Joyner saw five children with their skin brown like his own. Surrounded by an angry mob, those children stood alone. Mr. Joyner worked in nursing, he'd already gotten dressed. But he went to change his clothes again into his Sunday best. He walked out to join those children, got them safely to the school. Where the school officials blocked the steps, said they'd talk about the rules, but they couldn't come to school there. No, they were turned away again. And it took another decade for those kids to finally win. Sometimes it will be danger, sometimes it will be cost. But if we don't look out for children, well, then everything is lost. Those kids aren't just tomorrow, they are leading us today. If we can't find the way forward, let the children show the way. Before Rosa Parks was famous, before most people heard it came, those courageous mountain people made the bells of freedom ring. In the little town of Old Fort, they stood up for what was right, looking out for their own families and not shrinking from the fight. Over years of work and hope, the arc of history can bend. If we don't, if we show up for the work at hand, love can finally win. With so many struggles still ahead, one thing is crystal clear. The Catawba view is gone now, that bravery is still here. Sometimes it will be danger, sometimes it will be cost. But if we don't look out for children, well then everything is lost. Cause the kids aren't just tomorrow, they are leading us today. If we can't find the way forward, let the children show the way. If we can't find the way forward, let the children show the way. That's the Ballad of Catawba View. And that will probably be on my next album. Um, and there's no telling when that album's gonna come out, but um, really tickled to play it for you here tonight. Thanks so much for making me welcome.
in this amazing circle of folks. Thank you so much, David. That I loved it. I will definitely be adding that to all of my playlists and have me on me as soon as it comes out. <laughs> I'll get you a copy before anybody else gets one. <laughs> yeah, you're Thank an you. incredible songwriter. Thank you, David. Thank you. I'll step back now. I sure appreciate you all. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Thank you, David. Um, thank you to all the wonderful people we've had. Just take time out of their day to continue to share the story. Like I said, enough. Not enough people can know this story. I, it's such a wonderful story. And the fact that it happened right here in our small town and many locals and people from, you know, we have, I've seen people from New York, like in California, just everyone hearing the story is so important to me. And it's important to everyone on this project. And I just have, want to thank all the panelists for their time. Yeah, and I mean, just reflecting on how many amazing things we can do when we come together. I mean, to have the vision for the mural, to uncover the history and the stories, to have you here, you know, as Albert Joyner Sr.'s great granddaughter, to have um, David write this incredible song um, reflecting on that history, to have a filmmaker like it just we didn't plan any of this y'all it just came together like a beautiful constellation of stars in the sky and that's what happens when you when you work together as a community and so that's i think the magic of people on the move for old fort and the work that we do um, with the west Marion community forum too so again i want to just thank david lamont so so much um he's being way too humble we could not have pulled this project off without him um, we are a messy and lovable crew and appreciate everybody who worked so hard over the past couple of months to make tonight happen. Um, thank you to everyone for taking the time to support us and really love on this project with us tonight. Um, Kyla, you are just a rock star. I am your biggest fan. <laughs> I want to work with you forever. Thanks for your contributions to this evening. It was such a pleasure to co-host with you. Um, I want folks, if you can, to visit our website, www.oldporttogether.org. Um, learn more about the project, purchase a t-shirt, donate to the amazing work of people on the move for Old Fort. Um, we're still actually fundraising to complete a few elements of the mural. We're gonna add a plaque, we're gonna add an angle mount, and we're gonna add lighting as well so you can see the mural at night. And we're going to have another dance party because that's what we do best. So <laughs> get ready for our next big ribbon cutting event, it's going to be on April 17th. And we'll share um, more information with you soon. Put on your dancing shoes, put on your face mask and come get down with us, y'all. And thanks, everybody, for being here. Thank you, everyone. This was so fun. Yeah, that was great. Bye, everybody. Have a good night.